In this video, we will introduce different audio DSPs used at Dactronics. DSP stands for Digital Signal Processor, and there are many different varieties out there. In general, a DSP is a device that takes a digital audio signal and applies math to perform adjustments to that signal. Some basic DSPs only provide adjustments like equalization, volume adjustments, and adding delay to signals. More advanced DSPs are the base of a whole system platform that provides full system control and advanced system processing. DSPs come mainly in two different flavors, standalone DSP units and onboard DSP. Standalone devices, generally referred to as DSPs, are dedicated digital signal processors that act as a system control unit. These tend to be more powerful processors whose main function is to process and route audio signal from various sources to various destinations. Additional features may exist on these units to allow non-experienced users to adjust DSP parameters such as allowing design of custom control interfaces and integrating with other control equipment. Onboard DSP can be found in almost any digital audio device. These are generally less powerful and are dedicated to performing specific functions. For example, amplifiers can have onboard DSP to provide speaker processing for each output channel. Digital mixers also have onboard DSP to perform their functions. At Dactronics, we have used various DSPs over the years. Our current systems are mostly designed using QSC QSYS cores. We also use Harman's BSS Blue series of processors, though these are more common in systems installed prior to 2017. Another common DSP unit is the Shure DFR22. This is generally used with ref mics for feedback reduction. It's also possible to run into Biamp Audia and Nexia processors, though these are mainly on much older systems, and we will not be covering them in this video. QSC's QSYS cores are a family of DSP units that are core to the QSYS ecosystem. They have various input and output configurations depending on the model and configuration that are ordered. Besides audio, they are also capable of controlling both QSC devices and integrating with third-party devices to act as a centralized control system. QSYS cores can also do some video routing, but this is currently not used in Dactronic systems. The cores use QSC's QLAN protocol for audio transmission and communication to QSC QSYS devices. The cores have primary and secondary networks for a redundant setup in case one network goes down. Cores also have GPIO, which stands for General Purpose Input and Output, for connecting things like closed contacts, buttons, LEDs, fire alarm integration, or providing a trigger to a third-party device. The Core 110F has a fixed analog input and output configuration, consisting of 8 inputs, 8 outputs, and 8 flex connections. The flex connections can be set individually to either be an input or an output in software to provide some more flexibility. The 110F also has digital inputs and outputs from other devices over QLAN and or Dante. Core 110F DSPs generally need a license for Dante to be activated, though newer cores ship with a few channels of Dante functionality. With the Core 110F being a fixed input-output configuration, if one of the connections were to have any problems, the whole unit would need to be repaired or replaced. The Core 510i, as well as older models 500i and 250i, have a customizable input and output configuration. This means it uses 8 card slots that can handle different I.O. cards. This makes these cores much more flexible with local I.O. and has an added benefit of being able to replace or add cards if needed. These cores also have digital inputs and outputs from other QSC devices over QLAN, as well as additional protocols like Dante through I.O. cards and or software. Similar to QSC's core processors, the BSS Blue series is available in various input and output configurations depending on which model and configuration is ordered. The Blue processors use the Harman High QNet protocol for communication and Blue Link for audio transmission. The processors also have GPIO capabilities for things like close contacts, buttons, LEDs, fire alarm integration, or remote triggers. The Blue 100 has a fixed input-output configuration consisting of 12 inputs and 8 outputs. It can also send and receive additional channels over the Blue Link ports from other devices with Blue Link capabilities. The Blue 800 and Blue 806 have a customizable analog input and output configuration using four card slots that can handle different I.O. cards. They both have digital input and output capabilities using Blue Link, 
and the Blue 800 has Cobranet ports so that it can send and receive audio over Cobranet. The Blue 806 has Dante ports so that it can send and receive audio over Dante. There are other Blue processors available, but these are the ones most commonly found in Dactronic systems. The Shure DFR differs a bit from the other DSPs we have covered in that it only has two analog inputs and two analog outputs. It has no digital inputs or outputs. The DFR22 uses a serial port for communication with its control software, whereas the rest of the DSPs covered mainly use Ethernet-based protocols. The DFR22 can be used as a system processor for simpler systems. For example, it is sometimes used in SportSound 1000 systems to replace an old DSP unit, but it's usually used for feedback reduction purposes on wireless microphones, because this is what it was designed to do, hence the DFR part of the name, which stands for Digital Feedback Reduction. For more information on these DSP platforms, it is recommended to consult the manufacturer's training content. For QSC DSPs, training.qsc.com has QSYS Level 1 training, which is a good starting point and has videos that cover all of the basics to get someone familiar with their platform. For BSS DSPs, Harman has a Harman Professional University at training.harmanpro.com and there is a good starter course there called AP101, which is an introduction to Harman installed sound solutions and audio architect. For the DFR22, see Shure's website where the user manual can be found, and see the Dactronics knowledge base for additional information on any DSPs. <laughs>